Chers auditeurs, Dear listeners, bonjour. Welcome in Comme d'Archi Podcast Season 3. Saison 3 dans le monde fascinant des architectes. And in the architectural projects. Je suis Anne-Charlotte de Ponte, passionnée d'architecture et docteur des universités en histoire de l'archi. I am one of the spokespersons of Anne Charlotte, who is a PhD in architecture history. Merci. Thank you. D'être avec moi aujourd'hui. To be with us today. Et And maintenant, now, lundi en français, place au talent. And Wednesday, let's talk projects. In English, of course. Bienvenue dans Comme d'Archi. Dear listeners, welcome to the third episode of our Comme d'Archi summer series on the theme Short Chronicles and Beautiful Castles. This is Esther on behalf of Anne-Charlotte. I had the pleasure of writing this episode. Today, Thanks to one of our listeners, we are talking about Jacques Germain Soufflot and more precisely about one of his little known works, the Rivet House. Born in 1713 and died in 1780, Jacques Germain Soufflot is famous for having designed the Abbey Church of Saint Geneviève, also called the Pantheon, 1755, the square courtyard of the Louvre, where he demonstrated a profound knowledge of the rules of proportions linked to an unequal art of molding, or the restoration of the Hôtel Dieu in Lyon, 1741-1761, in particular the Great Dome. To quote Hervé Gransard on the Panthéon, far from the clever games of elevations with superimposed orders and pilasters, the new architecture aimed at nothing less than moralizing its practice. Henceforth, charged with translating the wheel of material and moral progress of the whole society. Jacques Germain Soufflot mastered the art of building perfectly. Between his extensive knowledge of the Gothic, stereotomy, the art of cutting and assembling pieces in stone masonry but also in carpentry, and his taste for neoclassicism, Italianate antique architecture. He took a stand against the Rococo movement, called Modern Chicory by his patron, the Marquis de Marigny. He appreciated the contrast between the lightness of medieval churches and the heavy Roman vaults. He also showed a certain liking for verticality, particularly the lantern towers, characteristic of certain Gothic cathedrals. This is a tower that rises above the transept crossing in some churches and has openings through which light can enter the building. All these influences can be found in the Rivet House, an intimate castle built for the Lyonnais goldsmith Jean-Baptiste Pitra. According to Gilbert Gard, the city dweller is never so well in town as when he is in the country. Perhaps this was the reason why Jean-Baptiste Pitra bought the Rivet estate in 1734. A wealthy bourgeois, he had his recreational palace designed by a young architect, Jacques Germain Soufflot. Although documents are lacking to authenticate the authorship of the work, it is corroborated by the recognizable stylistic choices. La Rivette combines Parisian, Italian, Provencal and local influences. The architect celebrates geometric perfection tempered by harmonious curves and countercurves. The volumes are modeled in a so-called modern aesthetic. Let's discover the property at the beginning of the 19th century. It was nicknamed Les Folies Pitra. The following words are from the Marquis Maza d'Avez. We can see the Folie Pitra on the hill, a house of the best taste. In front of it are a succession of terraces which lead, among the flowers, silvery streams and gushing waters to the banks of the Saône. Behind it, orchards, charming and artistically spaced groves, make the hill on which they are placed run pleasantly to the top. The famous architect Soufflot built this house, which, more than any other on the banks of the Saône, deserves to arrest the traveler's eye. The buildings, the façade, the gardens, the terraces, everything is of the most beautiful order. This idyllic view is quite recent, for it was in the middle of the 18th century that the property was transformed into a recreational house, in the hands of Jean-Baptiste Pitra and, no doubt, Jacques Germain Soufflot. Soufflot, who returned from Italy in March 1738, was a young man of 25 but his name was already known as he was admitted to the Lyon Academy in November. 
At La Rivette, the architect designed a mansion preceded by a vast perron, two chapels, an orangery, outbuildings and farm buildings, and a hydraulic decoration that adorned the terraced gardens and successive staircases, known as Italianate. This development was made necessary by the slope that leads from the main house to the zone below. But it is also sought after. Indeed, the high wall of the upper terrace is built at the steepest point. The house, situated on the half-natural, half-artificial embankment, is oriented east-west, in order to enjoy the best view of the Sone Valley. Following an Italian baroque principle, it sits almost on the edge of the void, positioned to be seen from below. The architecture is picturesque and follows the topography. The dwelling is designed on a rectangular, almost square plan, with two tiny wings on the sides and back. It is 25 meters long and 22.5 meters wide. The 500 square meters are spread over four levels, cellar, ground floor, first floor and attics. This plan probably shows an Italian influence and is reminiscent of Baldassare Peruzzi's Villa Farnesine. The Romanesque tile roof mode in nature is reminiscent of the plan's structure. For aesthetic reasons, the roof pitch is low and the chimneys are short. It draws the eye to the western façade, known as the French façade. This façade has nine bays spread over two floors. It follows the design dear to Jules Ardouin Mansart and Robert de Cotte, a central forebody of three bays, barely protruding, whose angles are underlined by sheer walls. The hall is topped by a triangular pediment. The wrought iron balcony is supported by brackets. The arched windows are characteristic of the Lyon region with their shades, also known as jalousie or blinds. However, they break with tradition and weigh down the façade somewhat due to their similar height. In fact, they do not reflect the ceiling heights of the interior. The hierarchy is normally distributed as follows. Ground floor, 4.10 meters. First floor, 3.8 meters. In the interior, several innovations betray a still new search for comfort. Moreover, the French word for comfortable did not yet exist. It only came from England in 1786. The fact remains that the bourgeois of the Rivette were concerned with their material well-being. Most of the rooms were heated or had bedside tables with a linen warmer. This device consisted of a laundry basket under which a stove was placed. Some rooms have a powder room with a table and accessories. For the comfort of souls, an independent chapel was built outside, to the south of the main courtyard. From this vast upper terrace, one descends to the five levels of gardens, no doubt inspired by the Belvedere Gardens laid out by Bramant in Italy. They are a true hydraulic masterpiece with a waterfall, a fountain, a rock grotto and a nymphium. A nymphium is originally a monument with a sacred spring dedicated to the nymphs. It is easy to understand why the antique taste of the time made the choice of such a decoration. The symmetrical staircases, with double flights of steps, which connect the terraces, are monumental, despite the narrowness that characterizes the property at this point. On the fourth level, two lateral flights of stairs give access to the water fountain, which is located on the circular median. Thus, the entire design of the Rivette estate reflects a certain Italian nutrition. But Soufflot, also drawing on Lyon's know-how, proposed a synthesis of ancient, Italian and local traditions revealing his art. The alternating rows of sewn pebbles are arranged in the shape of fish bones. To imitate the Roman tuff and peperino, the bases are made of smooth stones and blocks. The work on the stone, which is alternately polished or rocky, is reminiscent of the Villa Garzoni. Each material has its own color in variations of gray, white and beige. Time has since erased the nuances. The contrast between the almost austere purity of the volumes and the fashionable decoration made of curves and countercurves gives the Rivette its picturesque character. In 1920, the Rivette was used as a diocesan retreat house. 
It was bought in 1972 by the Hospice Civil de Lyon, the same hospices that were responsible until 2011 for another neoclassical masterpiece by Jacques Germain Soufflot, the Hôtel Dieu de Lyon. Today, many of these bourgeois, intimate castles, these houses in the fields, have disappeared due to lack of means, maintenance or public interests. The question of their conservation was already raised in 1922 when Roville wrote We are making an inventory of all the stones of the town. There is not a door that is not described, a house whose history is not known. Engraving has restored the old aspect of our squares and streets. Photography preserves the present aspect. But the old houses in the fields are disappearing little by little, and nothing remains of them except the memory kept by those who were happy there. Dear listeners, thank you for tuning in. Let's meet again next week for a new Summer Come Darshi in English. And until then, take care of yourselves. Goodbye. Thank you for listening. Thanks to Julien Robourg, sound engineer, who is collaborating with us today. Don't forget to tune in to our previews on Instagram at Comdarchi Podcast. If you enjoy this podcast, don't hesitate to promote it by giving it five stars and a little comment on Apple Podcasts or on your favorite podcast platform. And above all, subscribe to listen to all of our episodes for free. See you soon, and until then, take care of yourself.